It is officially the peak of summer. We're entering into the first week of August. It's hot outside, and this is a wonderful time to be a pro home cook because if you go to the local farmer's markets, you can pretty much get any produce you want. Things are in abundance. We're at the peak of the growing season, which is great for getting in the kitchen and cooking up fresh dishes. But the question is, why am I thinking about winter right now? Because that's what people did. Before there was refrigeration, before there were supermarkets everywhere, humans were always thinking ahead, thinking to those colder months when things weren't growing, figuring out how they could take this abundance of food in the summer and preserve it so they could have fresh food all winter long and they could survive those colder months. So in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you one of those preservation techniques. I'm gonna be showing you the complete guide to fermenting vegetables. So you pretty much can go to the market, pick any vegetable you want, put it in a jar, ferment it, so you can have fresh vegetables all year long. But first, we gotta to head to the market to pick up some freshies. got a great variety right here of veggies from the farmer's market. I'm trying to do as many different types of vegetables as I can for this fermentation project. I'm gonna head to the studio for the first ever cooking video there, but I've got a very important renovation to take care of first. I gotta start up the fermentation station. One of the reasons I'm so excited about this space is because it gives me so much more room for experimentation, for crazy food projects. And you know I'm obsessed with fermentation and, and different food projects like kombucha and beer making, sourdough bread, fermenting vegetables, miso, and all of these things that I haven't tried, like cheese making. I didn't have room for cheese making. And when I saw this little area back here away from the light, tucked in the corner. It made sense to turn it into an area that was dedicated more to these projects, to fermentation, to the sciencey stuff, a place where I could store all of these experiments. I'm gonna be turning this into a, a fermentation station, you could call it, and really pimping this out for future food projects. So the first thing I'm doing for this space is actually the sponsor of the video, Reclaimed Arbor. And what they do is they reclaim pieces of wood and they cut them into thin strips like this for easy installation on your wall for wood paneling. And I figured since this wall is white, I wanted to create a different feel, a different set. And I thought having wood panels in there, I don't know, it just felt right for the vibe of the fermentation station. So I'm going to install these wood panels on the entire wall back there. All the wood is reclaimed wood from California and they actually plant a tree for every box they sell, which is pretty cool. And you can get the wood in a few different tones and then also either the stick-on panels or just regular. I'm using regular today because I actually have a brad nailer. I figured it'd be a little easier to just brad nail it right into the wall, but you can use the stick-ons no problem if you don't have the proper tools. This is looking so crazy right now. I'm loving it too. I'm having a lot of fun because you get to match up the patterns, which is, I don't know, it's a little bit of creativity. All of these different wood grains, different types of woods, pretty random, but then it comes together and looks wild. Wow, that is so sick. What else can I laser cut is the question. So I ordered a bunch of jars because I've got a new studio and I'm gonna need a ton of these for pantry items, for the shelving, for the fermentation station, a lot of projects. So the first thing I'm gonna do 
is pop these in the dishwasher just to make sure you get the, the factory settings cleared off. Any type of dust or residue or chemicals, you wanna clean that off. It doesn't have to be insane, but because I have a dishwasher, I'll put them in there. You can just use soap, that will be fine. But these jars are perfect. The ones with the screw top lid, this air seal, that's what you want for fermenting. It's not necessary, but it will certainly help. Fermentation station looking real good. So I took this shelving from Ikea right here and I stained it in a walnut coloring. So it kind of goes with the, the flow of the kitchen since I have a lot of walnut tones in the kitchen. It's just one flowing piece. Over here, oh, wait till this piece comes in. I'm gonna build a, a cheese cave and a kegerator. <laughs> but let's not get too carried away just yet. We gotta start fermenting some veggies to fill the shelf. Before we get started fermenting our veggies, I wanted to give you a baseline knowledge of fermentation because I'm sure a lot of you are new to fermentation and it can definitely be overwhelming at first. It can be a little scary, especially for anyone new to the process. And I find when you do have that baseline knowledge, when you understand the process, when you understand some of the science, you're gonna have a lot more confidence when you go to actually ferment your food. So the question is, what is fermentation? Well, fermentation is pretty much just controlled decay. Just like human beings, food has a life, and because it's living, it's gonna die. It just happens to die a lot quicker than humans, so when we ferment our food, we get to preserve it. We get to make it last a lot longer than it would in its fresh form, sometimes months, even years when we ferment it. It also unlocks vitamins and nutrients in the food that aren't available in its fresh form. That can be very healthy for us. It can unlock unique flavors as well. So that funkiness, that acidity, that is all from fermentation. So delicious flavors are always a bonus. And also it can create alcohol in certain forms of fermentation. So how does fermentation work? Well, there are millions of microbes in the environment. They're in you, they're in your food. And in fermentation, there are certain microbes like yeast, bacteria, and mold that feed off the carbs in certain foods like sugars and starches, and they convert those starches into acid, into gas, and into alcohol. So there's a few types of fermentation, three specifically. You have lactic acid fermentation, which you find in sauerkraut, in yogurt, in kimchi. You've seen me do that a lot on this channel. There's alcohol fermentation, which you find of course in wine and beer and there's also acetic fermentation which you find in vinegar and kombucha which I make a ton of kombucha so I take advantage of all of these different types of fermentation now the key to fermentation is the environment this is how we control the decay. We control the environment because there's good bacteria, there's bad bacteria, there's good microbes and bad microbes. So we're always trying to keep in the good microbes that are gonna ferment our food properly, that are gonna give us a healthy product, and we wanna keep away the bad stuff that's gonna create the mold and the decay that we don't want in our fermented foods. Now, specifically for our veggies, we're dealing with lacto-fermentation, and the by product of lacto-fermentation is lactic acid, which is why we have that tanginess from this fermentation process. Like when your yogurt tastes super tangy or pickles, that comes from lactic acid. And there are two key elements to create the perfect environment for lacto-fermentation. Number one is we want to cut off the oxygen. So aerobic, like aerobics class, means with air. You're using your breath, you're using oxygen to work out. We do not want an aerobic environment when it comes to lacto-fermentation. We want an anaerobic environment where there's no oxygen involved because the oxygen is where those bad bacteria will come into play. But when there's no oxygen in the environment, we're promoting the good bacteria that we want. So you can see right here, when we are fermenting our veggies, if this is our water line of our bottle, you do not want any of the veggies poking through like here. Any veggies that are in contact with the oxygen above the water line are gonna be susceptible to mold. So we have to make sure we keep them under the water where there's no oxygen available so we can have a proper fermentation. And I'll go over that process a little bit later. Now the second key element in lacto-fermentation is the addition to salt. 
Not only does salt make our food taste delicious, but it also keeps away those bad bacteria that we do not want in our food. So by adding salt to our veggies and keeping them submerged in water, we're gonna create the perfect environment for the lacto-fermentation to take place. Now there's a really simple equation that works great for fermenting veggies. All you have to do is find the weight of your vegetable that you're fermenting, plus the weight of the water that's going to be in the jar as well, and then you're gonna multiply that by 2.5% or 0 0.0025, which would look something like this. This would be an example of how it would go. Say our veggies weigh 400 grams and our water weighs 200 grams, that's 600 grams for both the veggies and the water times 0 0.025 gives us 15, which means we need 15 grams of salt added to the water for the perfect fermentation environment. Whew. You know what, let me just show you how it works. All right, I'm going to break this down for you really quickly. So we're gonna put our scale on and we're gonna zero it out with the jar on top. Now we're gonna pile in our veggies. Okay, so we are at 86 right here, but we're not done. We have to pour on our water. So pour that up to, not the top, because we're gonna weigh that down a little bit right there. So that takes us to 339. So that is the weight of the water and the veggies. We're gonna go 339 times 0.025, which is 2.5%, 8.5 grams. Now what I do is I take this water and I pour that water out, keeping the veggies in there, place that water back on there, zero it out again, and we're gonna add that 8.5 grams of salt. So we're just gonna keep adding, adding. All right, eight will do it. We're gonna put the lid on this. Give this a shake to dissolve. And then now that our salt is dissolved, all we have to do is pour it on. And we have the perfect ratio of salt every time for our fermented veggies. A little complex at first, but I'm telling you, it's so simple once you master that equation. There you go, you understand the fermentation equation and you can pretty much apply that to any veggie you want. Well, not any veggie. Some veggies don't ferment that well, but a wide variety of veggies. And I'm gonna show you some of my favorite combinations in this video that work great for lacto-fermentation. But there are just a few more key tips I need to go over before we start fermenting. One is the salt can definitely range between two to 3%. I'm saying 2.5 because that's worked for me. It's a nice average. I'm sure it will work for you, but you can adjust accordingly and always weigh the salt. Get yourself a scale and weigh the salt because some salt is super light and flaky and some is dense. So when I give you the actual volume, that's not always going to work the best. Your temperature, that is very important. Try to find a range in your house, your apartment, wherever you're fermenting between 60 and 75 degrees. If it's colder than that, it's gonna be very slow, the fermentation process. If it's hotter than 75 degrees, it's gonna be very quick and you really need to keep an eye on it or things can go bad very quickly. I've been there many times, so try to find this range. And last but not least, give your veggies a really good wash before you start the process of fermentation. Just water on the wash. First up for the fermented veggies are gonna be some tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, which is a great fermented product. So to the jar, I'm gonna add a little bit of onions. I'm gonna add some tomatoes, then some more onions, then a little bit of oregano. I really like adding the addition of some heartier herbs like oregano or thyme. And you don't need much because that flavor is going to intensify. And then I add some more tomatoes, add my water to the jar, then pour the water off, weigh out the percentage of salt, give that a shake, and then pour that salt back over and you're good to go. Next up is some corn on the cob. Well, actually, corn off the cob, because the first thing I have to do is slice the corn off the cob so it can fit into the jar. Then to the jar, I added a little bit of onion, some jalapeno for some spiciness. I piled in that corn, then added some more onion, jalapeno, a little bit of thyme as well for some extra flavor. And then I poured over my water, took the weight of that, poured the water back out, added my salt percentage, 
and then shook that up and poured that back over the veggies and you are good to go. Peppers are one of my favorite fermented veggies because they're so versatile. You can turn them into a sauce, you can add them to whatever dish you want. They can be sweet, they can be spicy. They're delicious. I'm gonna use some bell peppers today, but I'm actually gonna spice them up with a chili. And I start off by just chopping up my peppers into little bite-sized pieces. Then I add some peppers to the jar and I added a little bit of coriander seeds, some garlic cloves, a little bit of dried chilies to add some spice, and then more peppers. Then I added my water over, took the water out, added the 2.5% of salt, shook that up, and poured it back over the peppers. Another really fun fermented veggie is cauliflower. It holds up really great in the fermentation process, and also it's just so much better than raw cauliflower. Fermented cauliflower is delicious, and all you have to do is take your cauliflower and chop it up into bite-sized little pieces. And then to the bottom of the jar, I added some thyme. I added over the cauliflower. I poured over that water and poured it out, added the 2.5% salt, shook it up, and poured it back over the cauliflower. The last fermented veggie is carrots, which I love because they're naturally sweet. So when you add the acidity of the fermentation, it creates a really nice sweet and sour balance. So first we gotta take our carrots and peel off the outer skin, then chop them into bite-sized pieces. To the jar, I'm gonna add some thyme, a little bit of mustard seeds, a few cloves of garlic, then I added the carrots and topped it off with some onion, poured over the water, poured out the water, added the 2.5% salt, shook that up, and poured that back over the veggies. So now one of the most important factors is creating this anaerobic environment. How do we create that environment? How do we keep the veggies under the water? Well, there are a ton of different techniques. My two favorite techniques are one, just using a weight to weigh everything down, a weight that fits in your jar that's going to keep those veggies submerged. And you can create a weight out of different materials, just make sure those materials won't leach out into your liquid. Another great technique is taking a plastic bag, filling it up with a little bit of water, and then plopping that down in the veggies so it keeps everything submerged, but you're still gonna be able to get CO2 releasing through the side of the bag, which brings up another good point. Do you cover them? Do you keep them uncovered? Well, there's a few different ways to go about it. If you do put the cap on of the jar, you're gonna keep in that CO2, which is fine, but your veggies will probably be a little more fizzy. If you like that, if you like that carbonation trapped within your fermentation, that's fine. Another way is to just put your jar on very loosely so the CO2 can just release out the sides of the jar or just keep it uncovered and as long as things aren't getting in, you should be fine. This is very exciting. The first fermented food in the ferment station, other than my SCOBY hotel, but that doesn't really count because that's been going for a while now. Boom, let's load it up. Step one complete. Our veggies are in the perfect environment. They're ready for fermentation, but the fermentation has not happened yet. That's gonna happen over the next few days, and I'm gonna take you along on that journey so you know what to look for. But there are three main stages to fermentation, just to keep in mind. Stage one, we have the microbes setting in in the first 24 hours, really just killing off all of those bad bacteria. And once we get through stage one, that's when the lactobacillus start kicking in and converting those sugars into acids. And that will happen after around two to three days. You might see a little bit of bubbling happen. You might smell some more acids, a little more tanginess coming off your ferment. And then finally stage three, the aging process. And this is really when the acids take over and your ferment gets super tangy you'll see a ton of bubbles. That's the CO2 that is formed from the fermentation being released, trying to escape. And your fermentation can be done around four days. That would be the earliest, the earliest possible you could pull it. It's not gonna taste good before that because you haven't built those acids. It will actually taste quite bad in the first few days, but that can go all the way up to weeks, even months. Some people like to ferment and really get that thing tangy, 
get extra nutrients in their fermentation. If you like it funky, if you like it acidic, then let it go longer. These, I would say, I don't know, we'll go around seven days to 10 days. Maybe I'll let a few go two weeks. That's the fun part about fermentation. This is living right here. Every fermentation project is a little bit different. All right, so I have an update for you. I've pulled a few ferments from the shelf over there and we have some interesting results. I'm definitely seeing some carbonation bubbles, which is a great sign that the fermentation is happening. CO2 is a byproduct from fermentation, so you'll see some tiny bubbles that will like form down here and shoot up. And just to give you a look inside, for instance, the cauliflower looks great. Pretty much everything is submerged. You can start tasting the sourness. We're not totally there yet, but it's happening. Whereas at day you know, two or three, it doesn't taste good at all. Tomatoes, let's take a look at that. This is interesting right here. So as you can see, there's a little bit of white cloudiness. And that's totally fine. That's just a yeast build up on the top. As long as it's not colored, you're good there. Over here, we have the peppers totally submerged. We do have a few floaters, but you know, my hands are clean. I'm gonna try this. Delicious, starting to get nice and tangy. Now here, this is where things got a little crazy on me. So check this out. And I'm actually happy this happened. So the green beans, I don't know. I just like didn't submerge them, I guess I forgot. And this is what you're gonna get. Now that is a problem, and that is a great example of if the green beans are not submerged under the water line and they're exposed to oxygen, you get this fuzzy mold stuff growing. So although I didn't mean to ruin the green beans, I'm actually happy this happened because that's part of fermentation. Things will mess up from time to time, or you will mess up just like this, and it's fine. You know, I lost a few green beans, but I learned my lesson, and all of the rest are good to go. Um, so you're gonna lose a few soldiers. It's not the end of the world. Make sure everything is submerged, and check it daily, because this stuff will get out of control pretty quickly. There you go, we've got all of our fermented veggies in the fridge, which is just a beautiful sight because I can take these out at any point and throw them on a dish. I can turn them into a sauce or just eat them raw. They're delicious as is and they'll age in the fridge, obviously at a much slower rate and they can stay in here for months. I mean, obviously if they start looking weird or smelling bad, then get rid of them, but they should age in here slowly and be good for a while. And yes, this project took some time, but I will be enjoying these for months.